In this video, I'm going to show you how to control media, which is on your computer and have it play using SmartThings. And this will give you the ability to play the media during automations. Hi, this is Justin from Simply Smart, where we make smart home technology as easy as one, two, three. So if you're interested in smart home technology, consider subscribing for more content like this. And what we're going to be doing in this video is we're going to be using the VLC media player on our computer, and we're going to connect our smart things to the VLC media player, which is on our computer so that we can play media files in the VLC media player within our smart things automations. So if you are not in the United States and you do not speak English, this is one of the best ways to actually have your smart home talking because it can do any media file, any MP3, and you can record those or use any internet source to create those. So the first step is we are going to download the VLC media player. The second step is we're going to install a SmartThings device handler for the VLC. And then the third thing is we're going to add a device to our SmartThings. And then finally, we're going to show you how it works in automations. So obviously to get this set up, you're going to need a computer or at least a device that can run the VLC media player. Now for this to work, your device always has to be on and the VLC media player has to be open on the device. So let's go ahead and download this real quick. So I'm gonna leave all of the links that you need in the video description in the order that we're going through now. And then when it's complete, just click on run VLC media player and click finish. And now our VLC media player is downloaded. Now we do need to change a few settings in here. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna go up to tools and go down to preferences and then we just want to click on the all right here so we get all of the preferences and then we want to go to the main interfaces right here so interfaces main interfaces click on that and what we want to do is be sure that this web is checked so we're going to go ahead and check that and then also you want to click on the little arrow at the left and click on lua and then what you want to do is type in a password. So I'm just going to type in one, two, three, four, and then that will be our password and then click on save. Now to get these settings that we just put in to actually work with the VLC media player, we just need to close the VLC media player and then open it up again. All right. Now when you open it back up, it's going to pop up with a Windows security alert. You just need to allow access so it will be able to go through your firewall and the smart things will be able to communicate with your VLC media player. So just click on allow access. So the other thing we need to do is we need to figure out our IP address for our actual computer. We're going to go ahead and do that now. So we're going to go down to the start menu and we're just going to type in CMD. And it's going to be this first one here with the kind of the C in the black there. Click on that. And then we're going to type in IP config. And then just click on enter. And the address that we're looking for is the IP V4 address. So mine is 192.168.1.94. And yours is probably going to be very similar to this, except for this last number. So write down that number because we're going to need that a little bit later in the video. Okay, now the next step is we need to install a device handler for our VLC thing. So we're just going to go here and we're going to click on this. And I'll leave all the links, of course. And just click on the raw here. And then hit Control A on your keyboard, which will select everything. And you can right click and copy. And then we need to go over to our smart things groove IDE and we're just going to click on login and you would log in with your Samsung account 
All right, now once logged in, what we need to do is go to My Device Handlers. And we're going to be adding a new one, so we just click on Create New Device Handler in the upper right hand corner. Now you're going to choose the option from code, and we're going to paste in the code that we just copied. So we have all of our code in here, and we're going to click on Create. Right, now you can see that it is created, and I'm just going to go ahead and click on the Publish over here and for me. And now you can see it says device type published successfully. All right, so we have added our device handler. Now what we need to do is we need to add a device using that device handler. So we're just gonna click on my devices and we're gonna click on new device. And we're just gonna call it PLC thing. And I'm gonna have the label be the same. You do need a network ID. So I'm just going to type in some random numbers and then we need to choose the type. So we're going to click on the drop down here. Just go all the way to the bottom and look for your VLC thing. So here it is. And we just need to choose a location and a hub. So just choose those and then click create. All right. So now we have created that new device. All right, so now we are to the point where we can actually open up our phone and go into the SmartThings app and complete the setup. All right, so we are in our SmartThings app and this is using the classic app. So let's go ahead and go down and find our VLC thing. All right, so here you can see our VLC thing is here. So let's go ahead and tap on that. And what we need to do is go into the settings in the upper right hand corner. And what we need to do now is type in our IP address that we got earlier. So this is the IP address of our computer because it's going to be going to our computer to find the file to play. So let's go ahead and type in that IP address. Right now for the port, just type in 8080. And for the password, remember we put in the password before and ours was one, two, three, four. Now we can click on save. All right, and now we do have our media player open on our computer and you can see that in the circle here right next to test it is green and that means that you do have a connection to your computer and it is able to control your vlc media player so if we tap on the test vlc all right so the test works and now what we can do is we can actually use this vlc thing device that we just set up and put it into sharp tools and use it as a device to make announcements on our computer. All right. So now we are over on our sharp tools rule engine. I have set up already is the VLC thing test. So I just named it VLC thing test and now we can use VLC thing to play files. And what I did is I used a virtual device here, um, sharp tools run, which is just a virtual switch so I can test it easily. All right, so now in the flow section, we can go ahead and click on the plus sign and we're going to do an action. And we're gonna choose a device. And what we're gonna do is we're gonna choose our VLC thing. Now also remember if you add a new device to SmartThings, you have to authorize Sharp Tools to use that new device. So you definitely want to do that first or you're not gonna see your device here. I do have a video on that and I'll leave a link in the video description just in case you don't remember how to do that. So we're gonna to go to VLC thing and now we're gonna look at all the commands that we have. So we have mute, next track, on, off, pause, play, play sound and track, play text and restore, play text and resume, play track, play track and restore, all these different ones. We also have the speak command, unmute and all this. So you can do all of this and what it's going to be doing is going to be controlling your VLC media player on your computer. So let's try the speak first. So we're going to click on speak. All right. So just type in what you want to say and click on save and click on save again. And now our rule is saved. All right. Now, if we go back to our smart things, I'm just going to go back to the, my home part here. 
because my virtual device is at the top and turn it off. And now when I turn it on, it should speak what I just typed in. So let's go ahead and try that. This is a test. I am playing my VLC media player using smart things and sharp tool. All right, so you can see that it played exactly what I typed in. Now that's only gonna really work for English, I believe. Um, you could try other languages, but the real reason of setting this up is now you can play media files. All right, so I have some files here. Let's just try this. Hello, my name is Justin. My goal is to make smart home technology simple for everyone on planet Earth. All right, so here you go. We just played that file. Now, if you go to the bottom, there's three little boxes here. The left box here will bring up the side menu. And now you can see this is the file that we just played. If you click on that and click on information, and here is the location. So what we want to do is we want to copy this location. We're going to go ahead and click copy. And now we can close this window. And now we can go back to sharp tools and we're going to add something to the flow. It's going to be an action and we're going to add a device. So we type in VLC thing again. And now in this time, what we're going to do is play a track and we're going to put in the file path and click on save. All right. So now what was going to happen is when I trigger this virtual switch, it's going to play this MP3 file. All right. So let's test that out. We'll turn off our virtual switch here. And now we just need to save the rule. And now we just need to turn on that switch. Hello, my name is Justin. My goal is to make smart home technology simple for everyone on planet. All right. So you can see that obviously now we can play any file on our computer using smart things and sharp tools. And that is pretty powerful. Now, the bad thing is um, it's only going to play out of your computer. So if you have an upstairs and a downstairs, you would need a computer upstairs and downstairs. But this is a great alternative to using, say, a Sonos device. Using the Sonos device is much more difficult because you have to have the file that is going to play out on the internet somewhere. If you have Echo Speaks, which obviously I have a ton of videos on that, it's not going to play other languages and it cannot play media files like this either. So this is the best way to play anything that you want. And it could be music or a different language or anything that you want. You can play right from your computer. So I hope you found that video helpful. If you did, don't forget to like, share, and subscribe. If you have any questions, leave them in the comment section. Also check out these other videos on the screen now, and I will see you in the next video.